G'day everyone, Uncle Jojo. Great to see you all again. So, we've finished cleaning out all of our trenches. Some of them are still slightly caving as we're finishing off, but we've started to get all of our sand down. Once we've got this sand down, we get, get make sure it's to a level and it's below the edge beam. I'll show you that in just a second. What that ensures is that the sand gives us a stable platform to be working off. So once the concrete's poured, it sits on the sand and then what ends up happening is if the slab moves, it moves as one and the sand gives it a bed. It's, sand can be the most stable of all soils as long as there's no water around to erode it or to wash it away, I should say. And it's very high compactable. It can add up to 67% extra stability to a slab or slab footing if you put sand, certain types of sand or reinforce sand into place, depending on the area you are and depending on the type of build. We did try and source green sand, as funnily as that might sound, but just making sure that the sand that we get is taken from a mine or an area that is replenishable or isn't doing any environmental damage. We found it really hard to try and find green sand. Everyone kind of just laughed at us. Step with me down here. You can see here that we've got the heights of the sand and the height of the edge beam, two different heights. So this now gets a small 50 mil piece of foam put on top of that and that separates the concrete mass itself from the underside of the concrete and it helps to heat the entire slab rather than heat all of the ground underneath it when we put hydronic heating in. Then we put 125 millimetres of concrete between the foam and the top of the edge or the edge of the slab. By doing all of that what we're doing is creating a thermal mass of the slab itself but we're not just heating the entire ground area we're just trying to heat just the actual top edge of the slab so our pipe work which we'll show you later on will be about 50 millimeters down from the top of the slab itself 40 to 50 millimeters this say when the hydronic heating starts to kick in or starts to warm up it actually heats the top edge of the slab work rather than the entire slab work and then all of the ground underneath it You'll also notice that we've put in a bit of sand in all of these trenches along the base. So what that helps with is making sure that we've got, so you can see here, even some of the edges are kind of crumbling. We'll clean all of those out before we put the plastic in. Uh, what that does is help stabilize it, but at the same time, what it's also doing is, what it, that's also doing is taking away the excess moisture from the ground and going into the sand so it's not so sludgy before this. Before putting this sand in, if you come down here, you can see how sludgy the ground is. So this is all clay. So because it's clay, the water can sit on the top of it, it doesn't absorb. Um, and by having sand there, you can see that it compacts down really well. So when we do our slab work, you can see here that it'll be nice and compacted. And then it, it minimizes the movement that the slab itself can do. It, it free floats, if you will, as an entire slab on top of the sand, on the pads, and on the actual strip footing as well. A lot of these strip footings have blown out, so what were meant to be 300s have gone to 450s to 550s in some places. And the depth of it, instead of being 700 mil deep, we're down to about 800 in most places. Uh, and some of those have gone up to 11. You'll also see all of our pipes have been lagged, so no concrete can stick to any of our plumbing pipes. Um, storm water, sewer, electrical making sure that we've got all of those into place before we do the pour we're not going to get them in after any questions or queries about that flick them over i'll answer them for you best i can whenever i can thanks for watching and like always stay on real banana peel i'll see you in the soup